Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Cashflow Coma. Today we are collecting. Before we get into this video, I'd really appreciate if you guys clap that like and subscribe button. We've been doing really good. I love the support I've been getting. Um, also, I have a couple of questions, uh, very common questions, like in the big Facebook group, Vending Nation. Um, while I'm stocking this machine and, and while we're on our way there, I'm gonna be go ahead and answering the top 10 questions that I see with vending. The first question, where do I get locations? So this is a very common misconception where like, this is kind of like asking, how do I bench 315 pounds when you've never stepped foot in a gym before? It's just such an end goal question that you should really be asking like, do I have a business card? How do I make a good business card? How do I talk to people? How do I get more comfortable with people to where I can make business deals happen? Um, how do I advertise? How do I get a good website going? Do I need a contract? Uh, what kind of machine should I be putting in places? These are the kind of questions you should be asking to get yourself to eventually lead up to getting a location. Um, another way you can get a location is to buy them out, which is what I've kind of been working on. I actually have three locations now, guys. Um, I bought a kind of like a mini route that this guy kind of didn't want anymore. Um, another great way to do it is to just buy locations and buy routes. I can show you how to do that in a later video. Leave me a comment if you would like to see that. Next question, do I need an LLC before I get started in vending? This is another misconception that surprisingly I've seen a lot of YouTubers say yes to. Guys, if you're starting any kind of business, I would be more concerned about getting green as possible, as much as possible, as quickly as possible, rather than getting a piece of paper that says you own something. I mean, the LLC, this is the reason why we have the LLC. You have your tax benefit, um, it taxes are a lot better with an LLC, it's a franchise tax, and then you have your liability issue. You know, God forbid, probably won't happen, hopefully it doesn't, but if somebody hurts themselves with your machine, or if, you know, something happens to your machine and somebody comes after you, they'll come after your, L your LLC and not you personally. This is very advantageous to people, obviously. Um, you know, again, that probably won't happen. I would be more concerned about making money with your business rather than having something with your name on it. Okay, next question. Should I buy a machine before getting a location? I have never bought, the, the location that I got, I made sure that I secured it first before getting a machine. I mean, I don't know if maybe you have a bunch of land or a bunch of garage space to, um, to put extra machines. I don't know why you would want all those assets just sitting, not making money for you. But I always make sure to have a location first. Um, how do you move a location? Or how do you move a machine? Um, I just, honestly, I just hire somebody to do it. It's like 75 bucks. It's not that bad. Um, if you're really into it, and maybe if you're like a seasoned vendor years down the road, this guy had um, just like a pickup truck, and he had the tailgate cut off and uh, and uh, like a hydraulic lift put on the back and that's how he did it, so. How do I price items? There's like a really easy guide, you know, and if you've ever seen any kind of vending machine, you'll know that pastry is $1.25, chips are a dollar, chocolate is like $1.25, nuts is like 75 cents. Um, it's really easy to find that. Where do I buy inventory? Sam's Club. Do I offer a discount um, or no? Do I offer a commission, a percentage of sales to a location when I'm trying to get a location? No, no. Um, unless it's like a very good, the top three best locations that I can think of are universities, airports, well maybe not in this day and age, but was airports and then hospitals and wellness centers. If they had a deal and you bought that location and said, yeah, we've been getting 5% or 10%, I would be okay with that considering those are the best locations. But if you're like trying to figure out and you don't even know how sales are, how volume are, then no. It's a convenient, the machines are a convenience to their employees and their customers, not to their wallets. So, no. Should I make a contract? Should I type up a contract for a location? 
if you don't know what you're doing and if you're asking that question, then it's probably a no. Um, most places you really don't need a contract. I have three locations now and I have not needed a contract for any. Um, guys, all these are, are machines that somebody thought of. See, like this is again why I, I kind of stopped location hunting. Any kind of place that you, th and this goes for anything in life really, if you think that car dealership will be a good location and you want to go in there and offer them a machine, guys, do you know how many people have probably done that before you? So the best locations are most likely taken. Um, you know, these are things that you just got to wait on until somebody decides to sell them if you really want that specific location or put in a bid if it's a contract. And, um, and that's how you would get that kind of location. I have not needed a contract or typed up a contract to do any of that. Um, how do you know how much a location will make? Well, yikes, man. That's the whole thing, isn't it? Is, is knowing how much a location will make. This is, again, why I don't location hunt anymore. I'm just going to buy out somebody's location that they don't want anymore. You know, uh, you got to be able to trust them. They got to be credible. If they say that it makes 400 a month, you know, do some research on it, kind of search around, kind of just use your head and say, okay, how many employees come in here a day? Okay, does it look pretty busy? Does it look believable? Um, for my new locations, it's absolutely right. I have a soda machine in an apartment complex in the laundry area. Super stoked about that. Um, so that one makes 450 a month. And so we'll actually do a collection video on that next week. But yeah, those are pretty much the top questions that I get in vending, or that I see at least. Um, right now, we are just about heading to my best location, and we are about to have a pretty good collection day of two weeks. Good morning, it's Andy with Prestige Vending. Looks like the door is open, but just letting y'all know I'm here. This is from a week. We're going to go ahead and to Nice. Nice. So, last time you said you were trying to coach us, how have they been doing? Pretty good, you know, not bad. Uh, I know something got really excited since, since I put them in. So it was like a moderate seller? Um, it's not bad, it's about halfway in since I started them. Um, there might only be like one or two buyers, but, you know, they did alright. Um, yeah, I like it. Zaki's been doing good too, and now we got some new uh, the Fiesta pack, so I'm excited about that. Hi. Are on the stun diet, drinks go bad faster. Dr. Pepper, okay. 
just give us a Pepsi good tip for a little while longer. Yeah, diet drinks go that faster, you guys. Looks so. Great collection. Um, astonishing, actually. I'm astonished. And um, we're not even counting credit cards, guys. That's the best part. You want to talk about those numbers? We will. Let me, uh, hang on. Yeah, you know, it's, um, you know, it's always unfortunate when a machine's giving you trouble. And, you know, that's just the last thing you want. And it's got to be on your head, though. You know, there's, it's not all just profit, profit, profit. There are some losses sometimes. The worst case would be losing a customer. Um, yeah, the worst case would be losing a customer, which we don't do. So I absolutely gave her a refund and a free drink to say sorry. Okay. Oh my goodness. Great collection. Ooh, it's hot out here. You know, August in Texas, as you can imagine. Great collection. Um, so. Okay, so that machine that is not mine, but I'm just controlling is uh, giving us some trouble. Um, I have one unhappy customer who left a note on the machine, you know, so that's never a good sign, you know, it just kind of bums you out because I do care about my customers and I do care, like I want to do the best, obviously, because I want them to buy from me again. But, um, you know, the last thing I want is an unhappy customer and for them to not buy from me again. So um, she left her name, she left a note, I went uh, to her desk and I personally said, hey, I'm really sorry this machine's giving you trouble. I'm gonna get it worked on and I'm gonna you know, see what we can do about that. And then I left her, uh, I gave her for a full refund and I gave her a drink to say I'm sorry, her favorite iced tea. She already had one opened on the desk, which means that she bought for me that morning. So, you know, um, it's really unfortunate when something like that happens, but wow, guys, great collection. We have not even counted credit card sales. The credit card machine is astonishing. Um, yeah, not even counting dollar bills, which is still, we collected a fat stack, but it's always, it's always good to see when you, when you have a, when you pick up a great collection, there's just, there's no better fi Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> That'll be good for sales, great, oh wow. Okay, that'll be good for sales. Um, but yeah, the machine, absolutely. Like, I, I know for a fact that machine is several people's lunch or snack, like, every day. So it is imperative that I, I stay on top of that machine. Man, dude, some of those things, I mean, a whole row, two whole rows were wiped. They were wiped clean. The credit card machine really amps it up too because then it's like, you know, especially if someone has an actual credit card, you know, there's just, there's no real limit. It's like, oh yeah, I just put it on the card. You know, it's not like, oh, I'm out of money. You know, they, they can just not think. It's a lot of people get in debt, by the way. But, awesome, super excited to count this out. Um, our next location is gonna be great as well. I'm gonna be placing a, a small bulk machine in this apartment complex I got. It's in the laundry area and it's a bottled soda machine. So love that. Um, we're gonna put a small bulk machine. I'm really excited about that. And uh, man, that I'm so glad I just stocked them. I'm, I'm a little worried about um, that machine. Some quarters got stuck there. So that's not good because I know when I visited last time, somebody came and, um, and uh, somebody came to me and wanted a refund as well because it, it took their money. So both of my soda machines are giving me problems not happy about that um, we'll have to we'll have to see how that goes
here's our cash alone, not even counting quarters or credit card sales, which I'm really excited for. Um, fuck. All right, you guys, we're uh, we're we're back, and um, there might be some change stuff in here. That's okay though. Basically, this is our cash for the uh, last two weeks. And credit card sales. All right, guys, in credit card sales alone, we have 175 minus 925 for the month. So, uh, minus 925. So, $165.75 in credit card sales. And now I'm about to count this money very fast. So. $43 in bills plus what was it $169 or $65 in credit card sales um, and now for our quarter count um, again just like with the bill counting this is something where I'm just gonna kind of sink in some music and count this as quickly as possible so that you guys won't have to deal with it as I do so without further ado actually I'm just gonna skip and it'll be done right as I snap my fingers. Okay, so now that we're done counting all the change, it was $64.65 plus $243 in bills plus $165 in credit cards, giving us a grand total of $472.65 for these two weeks on three machines, one location. That's pretty good. I am damn impressed. I am damn impressed. It's a good location. I'm a little worried that uh, those two machines are giving me trouble though. That's gonna, that's gonna be a problem. And again, as always, and with vending in general, of course this isn't all of my, um, you know, I don't keep all of this. In fact, half of it, if not, yeah, probably about half of it goes to buying supplies and your gas and everything else that comes with it. But, um, yeah, that's uh, that's our that's our two week collection video. Um, if you guys want to see other content, I, I do other stuff as well, not just vending, but I can do how to make credit card readers, how to get locations, where to get machines from, um, how to start your LLC without giving legal advice. Um, I do credit card videos as well, storage, uh, real estate videos as well, everything. I do a lot of stuff. Um, I really appreciate you guys watching, and I can't wait to. Uh, make some more stuff for you guys, please leave me a comment, give this video a like, and really consider subscribing if you want to see other content like this. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.